In this video, I'll demonstrate simple regression. This is a form of regression that's appropriate when you're assessing the relationship between a single independent variable and your dependent variable. While there are a number of different types of regression, there are two types in particular that are most widely used. Ordinary least squares regression, otherwise known as OLS regression, and logistic regression. OLS is appropriate when your dependent variable is an interval measure. Logistic regression is appropriate when your dependent variable is a dichotomous outcome. I'll be focusing on OLS regression in this video. Now in regression, your independent variable can be interval or categorical, meaning nominal or ordinal. If it is a categorical variable, though, and has three or more categories, such as a race and ethnicity variable that includes more than two groups, you will need to dummy that variable out to include it in the model. And I'll explain more on that later in the video. Now in another video on scatter plots and fitted lines, I demonstrate briefly simple regression. I'll replicate those analyses briefly here. Here I have an interval dependent variable infant mortality rate across states. My independent or causal variable is also interval, percent of children living in extreme poverty. Now the simple regression command is pretty simple, but I'll demonstrate it through the dialog box. You'd simply go to statistics, linear models and related, linear regression. And the dependent variable, simply input your dependent variable, infant mort in this case. And in the independent variable, I would put in extra pop. Okay, and let's go ahead and hit OK. Here we see our results. How do we go about interpreting these? Now in the upper right hand corner of the results you'll see the number of observations used in the analysis. This is the actual number of cases that our data had full information on. To the left and below number of observations we actually see the results of an ANOVA that is produced as a result of the regression. Most people don't pay much attention to this portion of the output. If they do, they simply look at the F value and whether it is statistically significant. The ANOVA results simply tell you whether knowing the value of X, or the model in this case, provides any significant information about Y. In other words, the null hypothesis is that knowing X provides no insight whatsoever into the value of Y. A significant F value tells that you can reject that null hypothesis and that your model, or your X variable in this case, does provide some insight. In other words, it's better to know X than to know nothing at all. Again, most people pay little attention to this portion of the output. Instead, they tend to look at the R-squared to tell them how well the model, or X in this case, explains variation in our dependent variable. Looking at the R-squared value, this is a value that can be interpreted as the percent of variation in our dependent variable that is explained by the variation in our model, here just this single independent variable. The adjusted R-squared is sometimes reported as well, the idea being that the more independent variables one includes in a model, the greater the amount of variation explained just by chance. The adjusted R-squared attempts to adjust for that tendency. In the bottom portion of the results, we see the regression coefficient for our independent variable. Here, 0.325, a standard error for that coefficient, 0.051, a t-value of 6.36, and a p-value of 0 0.00. The p-value, of course, tells us whether that effect for that variable, which as you can see is different from zero, which is our null hypothesis, is statistically significant which again only means that we can be 95% confident or greater that the population parameter is not zero. We also see a confidence interval given. Well, that is the constant. And between the two, we can construct a regression equation. The generic regression equation is simply y equals a plus b or beta times x, where y is the estimated value of our dependent variable, a is the intercept or constant, b or beta is the slope or the regression coefficient, and x is the value of our independent variable. So looking here, our equation would be y equals 3.26 plus 0.325 times x. This equation would allow us to predict values of y based on other values of x. Now of course the equation is based on the relationship seen in our sample data. So our predictions are always likely going to be off. That equation is also the basis of the fitted regression line. Using the following command, I can create a scatter plot of those two variables and superimpose the fitted line. Here we see the actual command I've already typed up. You see the scatter plot, and of course this red line is the fitted regression line, where again y equals the intercept when x is 0, and then the slope of the line is established by the regression coefficient. Now using another data set, I'll demonstrate how one deals with independent variables that are categorical, either dummy variables like gender or race ethnicity variables that may have three or more categories. This data set looks at blood lead level. Instead of an interval variable, I'll use a categorical variable as my independent variable. First I'll use gender, and here it's called female. So we'll go ahead and regress lead level and then female. 
And this model actually uses all of the um, respondents in the data set, including adults. If I were to rerun it on just those less than or equal to six years of age, then my n will drop. And here I can see that among all respondents, if we include adults as well, females do have a significant effect. So on average, females have 0.61 micrograms per deciliter lower blood lead levels than. If I only run it on children under the age of six, however, we see that though the coefficient is not zero, we cannot be confident enough that that could not simply be the result of sampling error, and so we can't reject the null. And we, at least under the age of six, we couldn't say that there is a gender difference among males and females. Next, I'll use a multi-category variable, new race. Again, I'll code book it here. So we see that it has four categories. And as you know with nominal variables, it doesn't make sense to think of one group as having a higher value than another. Rather, the values assigned, in this case one through four, are merely used to represent different qualitative categories. As a result, it is very inappropriate to simply insert new race, in this case, into our equation. Instead, we need to dummy it out, essentially inserting dummies for each category into the equation. But we have to leave one of them out to serve as a reference group against which we assess the other. Now you'll ask, why didn't I have to dummy out female? Because it's already dummied out. Males are serving as the reference group for me, females in that case. Now while you can create separate dummies for your categorical variable, you can also use a simple option in Stata, what I call the I dot option, which simply tells Stata to treat a categorical variable as a series of dummies. And it allows you to basically dummy a variable out without actually having to dummy it out. So let's go ahead and run a regression. Let me go ahead and regress lead level and then instead of typing just new race, I'll do I dot new race. And what that did, as you can see, is that it dummied out my variable. Now notice you only see two, three, and four. One, the category of one, which are white respondents, was left out. And so the way we interpret this output is that this is the effect of being black relative to whites in terms of lead level. So blacks, on average, and it is a significant coefficient, so that blacks on average have a 0.34 microgram per deciliter blood lead level higher than whites. Here we see a, another significant effect at 0.048 a p-value, and this is Hispanics have a 0.038 microgram per deciliter higher blood lead level on average than whites. And then we see no significant effect um, between others and whites. Now let's say if you prefer not to have the first category of your variable, in this case whites, serve as your reference group. You can sort of alter the I dot option to select a different one. It's a pretty simple command. Let me bring this up again. And instead of I dot, I'll simply do I, B, and then select the category you want to serve as a reference group. And let's go ahead and have Hispanics serve as the reference group. So it'd be I, B, 3, dot new race. And there you can see now 3 has been left off, and so we're going to be comparing. This is the effect of being white on blood lead levels relative to Hispanics, the effect of being black relative to Hispanics on blood lead levels, and so on. So that's how simple regression works. Um, hope you found this video useful.